you, you, you. It's your boy Chemical Chris. Chemical Chris, what's up? Q Mussolini. Oh, what's up, what's up? The whole gang, the whole squad's up here. Yeah. Anyway, we got a guest in the building. MTM, IU Music Radio. Shout out MTM, Mama Told Me. Shout out IUU Music Group. We got a guest in the house. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, what's up? Uh, My name is Brandon, a.k.a. Ghost Style from uh, 24 Herbs Crew. 24 Herbs, baby. Yeah, y'all say, mate, what? 24 Herbs, you know. Shout when I hear all, yeah. when I hear twenty four herbs, it rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Why does it ring a bell? Well, you know, we didn't. Um, we've been doing like hip hop music here for a long time. So twenty four started in oh uh, six, and uh, we've been doing it ever since. Yeah. So. Gang, that's what's up. Like, yeah. Actually, uh, in Hong Kong, like everyone I've talked to, you know, and I've asked. Uh, if they know who 24 Herbs is, and everyone knows who you guys are. Yeah, yeah So can yeah. you, like, shed some insight? How many people make up 24 Herbs? You're like a rap group, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're a crew. So it's like uh, six of us. Okay. Uh, two are from, um, uh, two members are from LMF. So that's Fat and Kit. And then one guy's like um, a skateboard, like, godfather dude. So, like, <laughs> JBS. And one guy's like a, a actor, producer in movies. And the other guy's uh, another producer. So the actor producer is Conroy, and but he's kind of like um, not touring with us, or he's kind okay. of behind the scenes now. Oh. And then um, we have uh, Eddie uh, Doyok, who's like a music producer. Yeah. Wow. So it seems like you have a whole mesh of different people, yeah, from artistic, for sure. different artistic yeah. disciplines. So how did you guys come together? Well, um, you know, we all actually knew each other because we all partied together. Like we all went to the same parties back in the day. And then uh, Conroy, he decided that, like, hey, why don't we get, like, a group together, you know? Nice. And so, um, you know, at first I was laughing at it. I thought he was, like, a, you know, a model. He wants to rap or something. And I was like, okay, well, if you got, if you got the dough, bro, then, like, <laughs> I can help you, bro. Okay. And then, uh, but then, um, yeah, then I said, cool, cool. And then slowly we got the group together. Hmm. Then we came out with our, you know, got songs together. And, um, yeah, there was a lot of support. From everybody. When we how, how long ago was this? That was uh, 06? 2006. 2006. So that's yeah. like, it's like uh, 10 years, 12 years. 12 years. That's oh, crazy. Geez. And you guys are yeah. still together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more amazing. like, uh, yeah, we just, it's more like a brother, brotherhood kind of stuff. That's what's up. Like, because um, everybody's doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. So where are you guys from? Um, let's say, we're, we're a bit, like, we got two local peoples. They're from Hong Kong. Okay. I was born in Canada. Um, one and the other two were born in Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. we lived in. We're all from Hong Kong. Like, um, we lived here for a long time. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm you like guys, an old head, actually. Oh, yeah. dear. Yeah. So you guys rap, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you gonna let us hear something before you go? I mean, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a little freestyle. Yeah, a couple. No, bars, I, I can't really you know. freestyle. But she was I going can, straight up, straight in. Bro. I could um, <laughs> you know, hear the bars. Give you some. Give me some of my verse, cause like um yeah yeah you know, like we just want to feel the flow the rhythm uh, maybe yeah. maybe a little a little later like yeah, yeah. The half yeah. Of the show. cool 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 right. for sure for sure I'll give you a few verses yeah no nice problem. nice yeah so like um like I was saying earlier like most people I've spoken to in Hong Kong about twenty four herbs mm. everyone like this is not I'm just I'm not just lying because you're an yeah, area yeah, yeah, yeah. but like everyone knows about you guys yeah do you guys know how much impact you have on the culture here in Hong uh, Kong. Not really, but because um, we're kind of st- like in the beginning, we just wanted to have fun, man. We were like mm-hmm. just partying all the time, and like so we didn't really. But and everybody was our friends, okay. so so actually we came in with like a real good energy, like it just party energy. Yeah. So um, were there thought? any other like fellow artists you're competing against at the time? Like, Not from really. Hong the Kong funny thing well? about Hong Kong is like once like. Let's say LMF. We got a shout out to LMF. They were like the first kind of. Um, what does LMF stand uh, for? Lazy motherfuckers. Oh wow. Yeah. So they were like, <laughs> they're the first ones that came out with like really like it was kind of a uh, metal hip hop rock whatever. But mm. MCN like uh, Kit and Fat, they were the first ones to rap in Cantonese, like make it oh, something, no shit. some make it a thing. You know what I mean? Like hip hop thing. They they took the raps and they really were rapping it, and they. Uh, took the language and tried to make all types of things with it. So uh, LMF is where it start. Okay. Yeah. And how did you guys, like, take things to the next level? Like, we all know, like, in Hong Kong, the music scene's kind of mm. like, you know, we oh, can yeah, debate about scenes. that all day. Yeah. But, like, did you guys ever expand your market through China? Or you? Actually, no, we, we never tried to go into China because back then China is still, like, kind of Wild West. 
There was yeah. no type of security. Like, you could go there, and then, like, you don't know what's going to happen, you know? So we didn't really roll with, like, big security guards or things like that at that time. And so... So, like, China know. was, like, kind of dangerous, right? In a sense. Like, yeah. like if you go there, mm -hmm. and then, you know, okay, so we finished the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to pay us, right? And then it's just like... Hell no, you know, what I'm or like whatever, you know, what I mean? or like let's just keep you one here, let's keep you guys here for a while, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was no type of security oh, man, in the sorry. way that like um, Hong Kong has. Like, uh, if yeah. someone books you for a show or you got this thing, then you know, you can let's say Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong's a little more civil than China, like, <laughs> yeah, in some ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, yeah. now it's different, like yeah. that was back 10 years ago, it was kind of, but now you know, so many people go there, like, yeah. Rap is big there, man. And it's then, almost like it's compulsory, actually. Like, yeah, it, no, it, rap it's... is evolving in China. I mean, it's pretty safe, actually. I guess back then, yeah. it probably was new, so everybody was a little rowdy. They was excited, yeah. so they yeah. might try to pull you off yeah. the stage or yeah. something. Yo, they I, just, I, I have a friend who got killed in China, actually. Oh, yeah? Oh, this is when real? I was in Moscow, actually. So a friend of mine, he's like a lot older than me, but he used to travel to China. He's mm -hmm. like a DJ. Yeah for gigs and stuff. And I think it was Guangzhou. I'm sure if you check Google, you see the story. He was yeah. from Cameroon. Okay. You know, he got he just got married, like to some oh, gorgeous man. Russian lady, just had a beautiful kid. Came to China for a show. Well, the story I heard from like his family, apparently was after the show, like he was going home. You know how in China, we have, in Hong Kong, we have alleyways and shit, a lot of crazy shit happening there. So apparently he saw like a girl getting like, you know. Oh man, I heard about this. Yeah, outside the club or something outside like that. Outside the club, you yeah, know. I like, remember that, dude. That was crazy. So I don't know exactly what was happening with the girl. I, I don't want to say she was getting raped because I don't know what's happening. But just like uh, yeah. a bunch of guys were around her, kind of like forcefully, kind of like talking to her, and he was trying to just go make peace and stuff, and pew, yeah. just got stabbed to Damn. death. Wow! Right there. Yeah, like bro. they. I mean, you know, and as as well as before, like let's say '06 to maybe like uh, '11 or '12. Um, you know, people don't understand that culture. Like you, yeah, you go yeah. there, you go there, and you want to perform your set, but then they're just asking for that like oi, oi, oi music, you know, and like, yeah. you know, why do we need to go up there actually? Because if nobody really is like, so when you what say oi, 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 what music is that? That's like just some type of club, like. Poof, poof, poof. Oh, <laughs> oh, for oi, real? Oi, oi. Oh, <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And we're we're trying to bring in some like show, but you yeah, know, so it. You know, at that time it didn't really fit, but of course nowadays, you know, um, you know, have you heard of Al Rocco? He's like in Shanghai. Uh, sounds um, familiar. I've heard yeah, of him Al before. Rocco. You can check yeah. out, and then um, you know, Where J Bo. Where's he from? J Bo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's no. now going into China. Uh, Where's Al Rocco from? Al Rocco, he's like Hong Kong. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's now in Shanghai, and then uh, of course Doughboy Bakery Crew, like yeah. they do, they tour a lot in. China now. There's a lot of festival shows that yeah. you know we can do, and yeah, so it's, it's good. It's good. Like it's, it's opened up a lot. It's it's crazy, and, and that, yeah. that's one thing I'm happy about. Like uh, artists from Hong Kong, you know, going to China and stuff. Yeah. I just hope like you know all the artists stick together, because there's also a lot of artists in Hong Kong that are yeah. like really grinding and putting their work out, but yeah. they haven't really had that. They don't really have the networks and stuff, you know. To yeah, it's it's like um, it's tough to make China. music in Hong Kong for sure. You know, it's tough. Yeah. Well, like it's. I think the scene's grown really fast, right? Compared to because I I moved here like three years ago, mm. and I swear to God, like the amount of artists I've seen, like you know, just pop up since yeah. then's been yeah, crazy. Quick. Yeah, right. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, know. I mean, honestly, like everyone raps, everybody can make a beat, like and nowadays, you know what I mean, and mm -hmm. they could put stuff out. But I think, uh, you know, you got to be consistent about it mm -hmm. and just kind of keep on moving forward. You know, facts, facts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, okay, so we're talking about like twenty four herbs, you know, like yeah. um, what kind of music can we say you guys make? Can we classify the genre of music? Uh, I you would make. I don't know. It's like canto, canto rap, or like hip hop stuff. Do you guys mix English with? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Because I do just the English part. Okay. So um, oh, you're the only English speaking. Band. No, no, no. They uh, they most of them speak English, but um, it's just Cantonese and English. I can't do the Cantonese part. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> Because I've, um, yeah, my Cantonese is not at that level yet to, yeah. to write, you know. Yeah, to be like I, could, I guess I could try if, if someone, like, did a ghost writing for me. <laughs> I would do it, you know. But then... They say Cantonese harder than Mandarin, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there's, like, uh, nine tones in Cantonese. Oh, wow. So if you say the tone wrong, then it means something totally different. <laughs> like, yeah. But Mandarin, you could kind of... It's, like, in a softer tone. 
as well. Yeah. So you can like it's more flu fluid. Yeah. Do you still like um do you get nervous before shows sometimes? Uh I'm nervous now, man. <laughs> no, man. <laughs> <laughs> you seem relaxed. No, but though. um, um <laughs> No, I, I guess just at the moment before I get on stage, mm -hmm. but then when we get on stage and you know yeah. the crowd, I think out that's there. quite natural for most artists. I think every artist goes through that, like right before. Yeah, you, know, you have yeah, yeah, a little something. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's it could you could call it like maybe not nervous, but like excitement, maybe. True. You know, you're excited to get on stage, rock that stuff. You know? Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Okay, so. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the hip hop scene yeah. in Hong Kong. Yeah. You know, like we're talking about, like a lot of artists, you know, yeah. popping up and doing their thing. What advice do you have for aspiring artists in Hong Kong? Like, what should they do to get their names out there? Uh, I think um, right now, because of the internet, you know, the impact it has on everything, right? Mm -hmm. Then I think Hong Kong artists where ev should do this exact same stuff that like everybody's doing like around the world sure. like use all those things that we were talking about like you know uh you know the soundcloud the you know the instagram the spot yeah. you, you have to have that that's like the basic yeah, basic, basic thing you yeah. have to have yeah and then um you know and then just keep working on your craft making try to make the best songs you can yeah you know okay that's, yeah okay true i agree with that so like um speaking of songs you know like we're in a day and age where like visuals are actually like, yeah just as important as Super, the music because yeah. people get bored so fast and they just want to see things happen they want to see your videos yeah and in hong kong we don't seem to have that many skilled videographers like obviously i'm not trying to compare hong kong to like hollywood or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, yeah but i just don't think we have enough videographers who um who can provide the skills required by these musicians you know yeah. to create the yeah. videos they envision in their heads when they make their music for stuff. sure i agree so that's agree. like one of the major challenges how do you think the artist from hong kong can like find their way around that um well i think if you're looking for visuals man you just have to like you know keep hunting on youtube mm -hmm. finding some you know, oh i like that video and then really dig who who did that video mm -hmm. and then reach out to them you know what i mean and like maybe fly them over or whatever like just try to do something yeah but realistically flying you know you know it's tough here like <laughs> yeah you know like most artists here they usually have like a full-time job they're, they're paying, 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 paying a lot though for artists man, paying. The, like um, so a lot of artists in the u.s be like the pay is not but i mean to me the fans mean a lot mm -hmm. the pay could be good you could get paid per show a lot but the fans mean a lot more. I'd rather sell more records because then it means more. If you go platinum and you get the platinum title, yeah. then people going to look at you more as an icon than you just doing a couple shows and getting the paycheck yeah. up front to try to get a lot of money. Sure, so sure. I look at the fans. So if you could supply me with a nice amount of fans and you pay for everything, we probably could work it out. Yeah, You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah, then. Yeah. You got to make sure those fans actually chime into the social network. Yeah. So that got to be a guarantee. By the time I go home that night, I should have a couple dollars in my pocket. I should have a good night. My crew should be good. And I should have a bunch of people following me that was at the show where I could convert those followers into record sales. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I mean, that there's two points there. That, there's one, like, um, you're saying about the videographers, mm -hmm. and there's one which you're saying about... You know how do you like what the artists can feel like they should have after the show just for the videographers i mean one thing is that videographers good videographers are also hungry to true. work with good artists true, that's true so i mean if you can you know you see something you like just call, you could just message them and see what they say it's like yeah. yo and if they send them their song if they like it you guys can sometimes it's just that and it's just like that, just that. Yeah. and then the second thing is like uh yeah of course fans and stuff and i think and stuff and major label and a indie label is that indie you'll have to do it yourself but with a major yeah maybe they have a budget where they can like throw it onto like uh you know your social media platform or put more production into your show or your videos and things like that so just two different ways there yeah but at least in hong kong the social media platforms are not blocked because in china you can't even get yeah. on google Facebook oh, yeah. or anything. They I have mean, their own you, versions. You yeah. can, but it's mm -hmm. VPN. But yeah, after, too, after yeah. going through all of that VPN, you experience a lot of drops and yeah. miscommunication. Yeah. You'd be like, you know what? But at least Hong Kong does give you the flexibility 
right. to be able to utilize Google and social media. Yeah, but you, hey, let me just chime in there. Do you think that's actually a problem for like the, let's say for Hong Kong now, right? Because everyone's on like the social media sites that they use in the yeah, US. And, yeah. But in China, they have their own. Yeah. So it's like, and I these think you have to get on that too. Yeah. Like if oh, you want to hit the China, you have to get the, the yeah. WeChat. And they have these things like, um, I, I don't know the if Yuku, like Chinese the name for it, but they have music, they have music, it's sort of like Spotify, is but it Weibo? in China. Is it it's Weibo? a Weibo, but there's another one, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, I'll give you the app after, there's but so many you, can, them. you just upload, you upload your songs there, and you already got like, just, if you're just a normal artist, you can get like, you know, tens and thousands of lists, hits on your song. Because like, it's China, the population's so yeah, large, so that's actually... And they're like, into yeah. it, you know what I mean? So yeah. there's a lot of people that have a lot of followers and everything, but we don't hear about, bec but but they have their own, they can make their own thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, but that's you, cool. in, in our country, you sell a million units, that's platinum. Mm. So, like, they have different music organizations that you can register with worldwide yeah. that mm -hmm. will calculate those as being units sold yeah, no matter true. where you at. For sure. So if you on these agent platforms, see I came out here because it's 4.5 billion people out here and it's 326 sure? million in the US. Uh -huh. So the chances of going platinum is far more greater than yeah. making more guap off the music and getting more flexibility. Yeah, so sure. you take the same motivation that you did here and bring it back to the US and they gonna jog anyway because you got majority of the world because mm. it's 58.9% of the world. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Based sure. on population. I think like, um, what you got? Because uh, I work with a major label as well. Um, they gave me a label to run. It's called like F Records. It's like the first kind of urban label here. And um, they, major labels, they look for Spotify and Apple. And they, you know, they they care only about that stuff, you know, like, but if you're like, uh, like for us, like 24, you know, like honestly, I just care about, you know, if you, if I do a show, I get paid, <laughs> that's cool, you know, and I get to connect with the fans and I'm good, you know, because I think I don't really get paid for Spotify or Apple Music sure. as much, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, that, yeah. That's just kind of like for the, the certified, six, like I'm certified yeah. platinum, like it's, it's something that you could put on your resume, but does it actually, you know, pay for rent or whatever, I'm not too sure, you know. What I mean? Let's speak about your plans now, right? Yeah. So what are your plans, like, uh, with your music group? What are some of the plans you guys have? Do you have any shows coming up soon, or? Um, shows so far, I mean, we just do, we just do some appearances here and there now. You guys just had a show a few, two weeks ago. Yeah, that was actually, little, like, two days ago at Lane Crawford, they have, oh, like, days a ago sneaker well. bar. Oh, oh yeah, so I think got I saw us to, Instagram. Like, you know, perform yes. there, and then, um, but yeah, uh, we're working on some new music. You know, we want to do, our goal is to try to do our third album. Okay. So we got the Trinity and then it's good. Like, because we did, uh, we've done two albums already. Wait, when so you say it's good, what you mean? You're going to hang out? Gonna the chill, like, it's chill. Yeah, you know, yeah. a lot of people say that, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we said that's, that's the market gimmick, man. <laughs> you got me. I know you as an artist from 24 Herbs. Yeah. Some people may know you as a music director for After Dark and Beyond, which yeah. is one of the um, new yeah. venues we have up around Central. Uh, we have hip hop events there. We have EDM. We yeah. have techno, and so on. So yeah. you know better. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, After Dark and Beyond and the goals you guys have for the year? Cool, cool. So I mean, I just started. I just started there in April uh, this month, and um, it's one of my old friends that you know we worked together because I used to DJ in Hong Kong as well, mm. and um, he was always in F and B. So finally, he's you know he's doing a restaurant and stuff and I said yo I can help you with the music you know because he's always looking for help mm -hmm. about the music and then so um you know the club's cool man it's got everything there as well it's got the sound it's got the mics it's got the bar um it's a small place you know yeah. but I think um our goal is to try to make you know the best the best promoters in Hong Kong can have their parties there mm -hmm. the people that are doing something that is uh you know, something creative, something, yeah. you know, with their passion, they could do yeah. stuff there. And then, like, I have to say, like, because uh, we had a, an event at your venue, yeah. and hands yeah. down, that was the best venue we've worked at, because, like, the sound quality was amazing. Thank all you, the man. performers, Thank all you, the artists, like, after they left the stage, they're like, you know, this is the best performance they've had in Hong Kong. Dope, dope. So, yeah. I hope you guys That's continue cool. Yeah, thank doing... you so much for, like, no, no, you know, I know what up. you guys it's did. It's our so. pleasure. 
you know, and then hope, um, you know, and it's cool that you're doing like hip hop events in Hong Kong. I yeah. think that's cool. And keeping Definitely. up with the music and everything, that's good. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, speaking about hip hop events in Hong Kong, mm. we don't really have that many hip hop mm. events going on here. What do you think might be the problem? Like, because I know, like, for me personally, being uh, an event uh, organizer, coordinator, right? One of the challenges I face mostly is with the venues, because mm. like a lot of the venue managers don't, don't really, really understand, understand that shit. The, yeah. They don't really understand the business they're in, you know. Yeah. They don't understand it. it requires like you know building relationships, networking, and building up. Yeah. For the future. Yeah. But they just want like they usually want goals like right. They want their they just results. Just want the cash straight the start, up, man. Yeah. You know? So. So what like what are some of the ways uh, event organizers can. I don't know, kind of like fiddle their way around this and, you know, not get overly frustrated. Honestly, dude, it's like just straight up, like, you just hustle, man. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to, mm -hmm. you're not going to, everyone's not going to be nice. Everybody not going to be <laughs> be understanding your stuff. But you, you got to take it with, like, for me, I just do it with, like, a, you know, positive attitude and just, if you mm -hmm. say no, cool. I just keep moving forward and just, you know, I leave that alone and just keep moving until I find people that I can work with or, like, mm -hmm. find places that really can you know, accommodate things I sure. do and or like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody, I think everything's about a vibe and a feel and like, Facts. you know, you gotta, I'd rather just work with people I vibe with than yeah. people that have money maybe, but you sure. know, we got, no, there's nothing in speaking, common. Okay, nothing, speaking of you know? that, people you vibe with, what are some of the venues? Can you just mention like some of the venues in Hong Kong that you think are uh, hip hop friendly? Well, you know, I think um, sometimes if you're a hip hop artist, you could try to think about doing those music rooms rather than a club. Because okay. club, they'll always say, hey, yo, you want money for the bar, or mm -hmm. yo, you gotta pay for the, if, and, mm -hmm. but in let's say like, for instance, a uh, music zone okay. in uh, K-Tech, Kowloon Bay. Okay. Like a lot of people have the show, it's about a 600, you could fit maybe uh, 400, 600 people. Okay. And they, they got the stage, they got the lights. So if you put on your hip hop show, let's say you mm -hmm. have like, uh, you know, seven artists, Okay. on the roster and then you you know you promote your own show it's a show okay. it's not people don't have to buy drinks they don't they just buy tickets and they come okay. and you perform you know and this is called music zone yeah it's called music zone you can check it out it's like uh, cool. k-tech uh, i think artists should definitely look that up yeah you get, interesting. a lot of people like a lot of people have their show there because um one problem that everyone says is that hong kong either have real small venue mm -hmm. or like super big venue sure. and there's nothing that you know super big venue of course the budgets are really high Super right. mall venues just too small, you know. So, mm. um, music zone's a good one. Okay. You know, now let's talk about fashion a little bit. Yeah. You know, fashion. I feel like fashion has a big role to play in hip hop today. Yo, for sure, man. You know, I sure. actually think hip hop is almost like sixty percent. Yo, who you know, towards check, fashion. check out who's at LV now, man. I mean, you know, all that shit is like crazy, man. You know. What? Like who? That guy was his um, who's doing LV right now. Oh, hey, Virgil. Yeah, Virgil. Virgil man. Yeah, you know, it's like. So like, it's like that's urban shit. Man, a lot of know? even a lot of hip hop cats you see, like a lot of these artists making music today, they get into music from fashion. Yeah, yeah. So this generation, yeah. it's it's hand in hand, man. It's hand in you know, hand. You uh, know, you know, hip hop's always about being fresh and yeah. You know. So and, wait, so what advice <laughs> do you have for hip hop artists today who may not be aware of that? Because I think there's a lot of cats who make hip hop music here and are not aware of like. How, how to stay fresh. How to stay fresh. That's okay. That's just one straight way to say it. You know, yeah. like, so yeah. do you think it's possible to succeed as an artist now, as a hip hop artist, without staying fresh? You can, man, still. No, because there's, so. it, you know, there's different levels. There's different type of hip hop music. True. To me, there's different type of, there's like, you know, the underground grimy mm -hmm. stuff. Like, for instance. Mm, they got K-pop, J-pop, yeah. EDM, hip hop. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's like a bunch of different dance genres. I yeah. mean, different music Like, you know, genres. like in the Hong Kong, like uh, Wild Style Records, mm. you know, um, uh, your guest before he was shouting out like uh, Fotan Lafayette, yeah, right? yeah. so like they're part of Wild Style those guys. So let me yeah. that Matt, mm -hmm. this guy called Matt Force, mm -hmm. and he straight up do the boom bap, mm -hmm. you know, kind of yeah. smoky hip hop kind of stuff, and um, it's cool, man. You sure. know what I mean? So he don't he don't need he stays fresh in, in that type of style. And, you yeah, know what I mean? And style, then there's yeah. super high fashion people yeah. that like the fashion stuff. So I mean. Yeah. It's there's a spectrum here. There's sure. still a spectrum. It's not just everybody into one yeah. style of music. Yeah, you know? no, it's universal. So yeah. that's what's cool. Uh, it's about not it. like China. It's like you, you get what you. You know, it's on. It's not universal like Hong Kong, but it's just mm -hmm. like everybody is local. So they got a certain creed or culture that they. Oh follow, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is just like, 
mix so you could be like who you want. You could kind of make yeah. your own lane True. and stuff like I think, that. True. I think like Hong Kong is like an international city, man. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Like we can just, you could rock whatever you want to rock. If you feel that that's what you want to rock, then yeah. rock, you know, and that's what makes it cool, you know? Yeah. So, okay, because we're kind of running out of time. We're going to jump right. into our final segment. So yeah. we have like a thing we do. We ask our guests to tell us their top three artists of all time. Could be an artist from today, could be an artist that's dead. Okay. Yeah, but your top three. Just think about three artists that you can't live without. Oh shit. Yeah. Um okay, I'm I'm gonna shout out like uh John Coltrane first, because uh, he's like the jazz saxophonist guy. Okay. Anyway, his music was like way out there, man. So Sorry, what's his name? John Coltrane. John Coltrane. Yeah. Okay. You can Do check you know him who out. that is? It's like no, a, no, 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 <laughs> anyway, like no, he influenced me a lot in music because he took jazz, the jazz form, and he just went left field with it, and then it just like uh, influenced me a lot. Okay. Um, hip hop, oh man, it's just like uh, you know Jay Z. I like you know Tupac. So okay, Jay Z, Tupac. Oh right. shit, I just said three, three, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. so I just called him, like, hey, hold up, slow it's down. Too much, man. Oh no, no. <laughs> damn. All right. Uh, Jay Z, man, Jay Z, uh, Jay -Z okay. definitely, because he's like, uh, you know, he's been he's been around. He's been right. he does like all types of things. It's like right. quite inspiring. And right. um, who's the last one? So you're gonna knock Tupac off the list like that? Oh, and <laughs> you know why? Kick you know why? Pac you know why? Because Tupac <laughs> goes hand in hand with Biggie now in sure, my yeah, mind. Yeah, like, be one, yeah. but I'm not really down. Like. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I don't, I don't want to like do, do any faux pas here. But you know, okay, let, I'll just say Tupac. You know, Tupac, what I mean? yeah. Okay. Pac, Jay Z, and the jazz saxophone. Saxophone. Uh, right? Yeah, uh, John Coltrane. Okay. I will, Word. Number four would be like maybe Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Hey, okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, you got. I mean, he was. Yeah. He brought some other shit. Like you know. Facts. Bob Marley so. go hard no matter <laughs> what. Legend. Anyway, yeah. all right, man. Why my headphones kind of fuck everything up? All right, so it's your boy Chemical Chris. Q Mussolini, the guy. Yo, it's G Styles, aka Ghost Style. Peace. Thanks yeah. a lot, guys. That was awesome. It was it's nice really talking good to talking to people that, like, you know, I can really talk about hip hop stuff. Yeah, straight up. Is there anything you'd want to, like, uh, say to your fans? Maybe 24 Herb fans or your venue, your followers yeah, yeah. of your venue? Nah, just, um, you know, just everybody, you know, keep wait, good wait, vibes. Wait, let me ask some questions. Do we have anything to uh, expect from. I already asked for 24 Herbs. You said yeah. you might be coming up with a, your final album, right? Yeah, the third yeah, yeah. One. How about with your uh, venue? Are there any events we should be looking forward no, to? No, no, no. We're just doing, you know, as it comes. Okay. Everything's as it comes, yeah. So. Facts, facts. Yeah. Well, we look forward to seeing more hip-hop events at After Dark. Oh, yeah, on, for sure, know? man. You got to do that. I hope so. You <laughs> we got to work on it, man. We got to work on it. We got to work on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to give us a quick flow right quick. Oh, Post man. Snap. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, on the spot, man. Yeah, yeah, just a little something for the audience. Okay, you know well, I mean? all right. I'm gonna take take um the hook off. Um, I think it's a classic song of mine. It's called uh, "Lazy on the Grind," mm -hmm. and I did it with a MC called Guakin. He he rapped the Cantonese part. I rapped the English part, right. and so um, it's called "Lazy on the Grind." So it's like. Mm -hmm. In the modern time, society denies the ill it hides under its street lights. Soul starts to slide if it's wrong or right. MIC crazy lazy on the grind. Yo, I try to rhyme truth in my rhymes. Yo, <laughs> I forgot the rest, man. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but anyway, right. check it out, man. Lazy on the grind, dude. Nice, yeah. nice. I, I kind of like have a glimpse of your style, the way you rap. From I'm, I'm more like, a, you know, I was influenced by like a lot of the social stuff, like uh, mm -hmm. conscious rappers. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. You know that's what dope, I mean? That's dope. I like that's to... The, that's the best because yeah. you can actually adapt to all the new shit that's happening. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, top skill. five, Chuck D for sure. I have to show. Hey. Like, oh, I learned, yeah, I learned all, the, I learned all like their lyrics and just like, you know. And he was a big inspiration, man. And what they talked about was like, you know, real stuff happening. So, yeah. you know. Hip hop's changed so much. Yeah. But anyway, we out of here, man. It's your boy Chemical Chris. Q Mussolini. G Styles, man. Peace. Woo! Peace out. <laughs>